Hi, I'm Christy J with Stitch in Heaven, and today we are going to talk about bonding by machine. When I first started here, I was having a conversation with Deb, and she said, what's your biggest challenge with quilting? And in this season of my life, I'm very focused on the piecing, and I'm focused on using my long arm, but I had a big stack of quilts that needed bonding. And she said, why don't you just put them on by machine? That's something I had never considered. I know that's silly, but I always did it by hand. But we found a, I found a very quick, easy way to do it by machine. So I'm going to show you that today. So the quilt I'm working on today is called Astrodelic. And it is art gallery, has art gallery fabrics in it. Very, very cute. And it is pre-cut. It is one of our pre-cut grab and go kits. If you've not seen our grab and go kits, we've got tons of them. So check them out. Basically everything's pre-cut for you, even the binding. And all you do is open the package and start to sew. They're very easy, very quick. And again, they're pre-cut for you. So you get to, you get to skip that step, which is a lot of fun. Okay. So this is the one we're doing today. Push those to the side. This one's Astrodelic quilt. And again, it's got your instructions on the back. Instructions come in there in your pattern. And then all of your pieces are pre-cut. So super easy to put together, okay? All right, so we're gonna lay this baby to the side until we get our binding ready. So I'm gonna put him over here. And this is the binding that came with the kit. So you can see there's several strips. There's enough to go all the way around it, typically plus 10 inches, okay? So normally if I was cutting these on my own, you could do anywhere from two to two and a half inches is general um, width of your strips for binding but some people do them wider, some people do them skinnier. It's just personal preference. We've actually done these about two and a half, okay? So what you're gonna do is unfold these and lay them out. And we just need to connect the ends of them to make them one continuous strip, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put these perpendicular and I use my little marking pen and I have a nice little straight ruler and I'm gonna do that from so we did perpendicular see perpendicular and then I'm gonna go from corner to corner diagonally okay and put that there and I'm gonna mark that Okay, and then I'm gonna just stick a little pin in it. Okay, now as you get better at this, you're not gonna have to pin it, but for this exercise, we're just gonna pin, okay? So you're gonna do that all the way through. So with the next one, you're gonna put it right sides together right sides together, mark your little line, and mark it diagonally, and then you're going to stick a pin in it, okay? Once you've done this with all of your strips, you're going to take these to the machine, and you're just going to sew on that little, on that little line that you just marked, okay? Let me show you how it works. Just be sure you pull that pin when you get to it. Sewing machines are not happy when you sew over the pins. Okay. Okay, let me show you the magic. So we've sewn that first one. We're going to take it back. Use our Happy rotary cutter or scissors. Cut it about a quarter inch. And then 
voila! You have a perfect mitered seam. And the purpose of the mitered seam here is because it's less noticeable when you put the quilt together. I also do the same thing when I'm doing borders, um, when I'm just connecting anything that needs to be longer than what the fabric is, okay? So when you take this, after you've done all your pieces, you're gonna take this over to your iron and you're gonna iron it open. So iron that seam open. And that just cuts down on the bulk. You can iron it to one side too, but ironing it open just kind of cuts down on that bulk of the seam. And you'll just keep going all the way until you get them all together. Okay, so once you have this in one continuous line of binding, what you want to do is you want to fold the binding wrong sides together. So you'll want to fold them like this and press them. So we're just going to fold up like this and press it. And I normally just go to my big old iron board, my big old long one I have, and I just kind of keep it going. Okay, so now I have my binding is ready to go. I have this really long line that has been connected with modern seams and I have folded it wrong sides together in half and pressed it. So now it's time to actually put it on the quilt, okay? So, and at home it's gonna go a whole lot quicker for you than it did in this tutorial because it always takes longer in the tutorial. Lots of fun. Okay, so here's my quilt again. It's called the Astrodelic and it is art gallery fabrics. Okay, put them over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually sew on the back side and then flip it to the front. So thread, I have chosen a thread that actually matches my project. I've done this on other quilts where the backing and the binding are different colors. And I actually sometimes put different threads in the bobbin than I do on the top. And that's perfectly okay as well. You just play with it and see what you would like to do, okay? So we are going to put this on the quilt with a quarter inch. I'm going to leave I'm going to leave a space probably about this long. I'm going to start it right here and start sewing it all the way around. Okay. So I'm careful to get it about a quarter inch from the edge. Keep going. I'm going to miter the corner too when I get up to it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'll show you how to do that. stop about a quarter from the edge okay I'm gonna cut the thread you don't have to cut the thread actually I'm just gonna pick up the foot and scooch it over so you can see sometimes I cut the threads sometimes I just don't I'm used to not cutting the threads but for this tutorial let's just cut the threads we're good with that okay so here's how you do this okay so we've stopped about a quarter from the end I'm going to fold it back on itself, folding it back, and then fold it back again on itself. Okay, so let me show you that again. We've got straight binding here. I'm going to fold it back on itself, 
to make a triangle and then fold it back going this way. Okay, and then I'm just going to keep on sewing. Let's see, put that baby under there and keep on sewing. Okay, so here I'm just gonna stop short because my other my other side is coming up so I'm just gonna stop short and cut that thread okay all right so people always wonder how do you join your ends I'm gonna show you how I join mine okay all righty so what we're gonna do is use my handy dandy little scissors I'm gonna cut right there just gonna cut it and then I've got to find my nice ruler and my marking pencil okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna overlap these um, however wide your width your width of your binding is that you cut it this one's two and a half we're going to overlap at that amount so we're gonna we cut this one two and a half we're gonna overlap this two and a half okay so you're gonna just put that there you can pin it if you need to but you're gonna overlap these two and a half so get you a really good ruler rulers are invaluable they're amazing so I'm gonna go about two and a half so two and a half and I'm gonna just mark it about two and a half okay so that's my overlap two and a half you can see underneath where I'm going and then I'm going to use my scissors and I'm just going to cut where I marked okay get rid of that okay so here's where the magic happens sometimes I have to keep trying this a few times just to make sure I got it right so I'm going to get my pins ready okay we're going to open it up here Okay, so they overlapped. So I'm going to take this tail here. Can you see that okay, Paul? And then I'm going to overlap. I'm going to twist it. Okay, I'm going to twist it this way and overlap these. Okay. And I'm going to pin these on the diagonal. Okay, I'm going to pin these on the diagonal. The reason I pin is because I'm going to check and make sure this works. Okay. So when I sew it, if I sew it on that diagonal, when I open it up, it is a mitered seam and that works, okay? If by chance you do this and pin this and it doesn't work, something's wrong, so undo it, twist it around, try it again. Sometimes I have to try three or four times before I get it right, but this is the basic concept, okay? So we're gonna take this, we're gonna get our ruler, So if you can see, you're gonna just butt the edges right up together, okay? I'm gonna use my ruler again and my marker pen, and I'm gonna mark that diagonal, okay? Mark the diagonal. Sometimes it helps to have a little extra space. If you need a little extra space, just kind of pull it or use your fancy pants scissors or seam ripper. It's okay to use your seam ripper if you need to. And just kind of pull those seams so you got a little more space to work, okay? But if you'll see, I've drawn a diagonal line here and placed the binding edges together. I'm gonna take this to my machine and I'm gonna sew right on that drawn line, okay? And we hope this happens that the way we think it will. <laughs> okay, but, and again, it's always a lot easier at home than it is on a tutorial. All right, so, gonna stitch it from corner to corner. Right? 
cut those threads. Before you cut off the tails, always be sure it's going to work. So I'm putting it here, and yes, it works just perfect. We're going to trim those tails off. You can take this to the ironing board and actually press those seams if you want, but a lot of times I just finger press these. Okay. And then you're going to take it back to the machine and you're just going to stitch that straight. You can pin it if you would like. I'm not typically a pinner. Sometimes I am. Get that baby under there a little bit better. Okay, and cut the threads. And if you'll notice all the way around, you can't tell where I stopped and started because that mitered those edges together, which is pretty awesome. Okay. All right. Now for the magic, you can leave your quarter inch foot on if you would like, but I'm actually going to change my foot out to just a multi-purpose foot. Okay. But you can do whatever you would like. Kind of depends on how I'm feeling as to how I do it. So what? So I'm good. I'm going to grab my quilt. We're going to finish this binding. Okay, it's going to be super, super quick. So what I normally do is you're going to just lap over that binding. And you're going to lap it over. You can kind of see your seam from the other side. I'm just going to lap it over just barely. And you can move your needle position if you need to, but I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way around. And just keep kind of turning it as you go with your fingers. We're headed for that miter, so I'm going to show you in just two seconds how I do that. You can do a decorative stitch here if you would like as well. I just prefer the straight stitch. It's just, you just don't notice it. But if you're doing something fun, like a children's quilt, you might want to do something fun, like a fun stitch. Okay, so let me cut this so you can kind of see. Can we see good here? Mm -hmm. All right, so what we have here is we have a mitered corner. Remember, we did that on the other side. This is what the other side looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to just pull it straight and flip it over. Flip it there and then turn the corner and do our straight stitch just like normal. It works pretty darn good. There we go. Um, on the back, you can tell there's just, I mean, you can't really see the line. The line just butts up right there to that 
binding. So you're just moving over just a smidge over that first seam line and you can't even see it when you use the thread color. That's exactly like the back, okay? So here we are. We are completely bound and ready to gift. Um, so this is binding by machine. And again, this kit is called Astrodelic and it's by Art Gallery. And it's just, it's ready to go. Thank you so much for joining us at Stitch in Heaven. All of these kits can be found at www.stitchinheaven.com and be sure to like us on Facebook. Thanks so much.